Hey there, Musketeers! Kate from Princess Minnie, and I'm back to filming. I did not mean to take a little extended absence from YouTube, but I am finally back, and I am back with a really good video if you like Disney World hauls and possibly Universal Studios hauls, which I don't know if I've really seen a lot of those out there. And to be fair, Universal Studios doesn't really have the best merchandise all the time with the exception of the wizarding world of harry potter um and so i i wish they you know had a little bit more that was really exciting to buy but i am excited to show you my recent haul from my last combined disney world and universal studios trip which was around the week of easter we actually drove to florida from our home in um, pennsylvania and it was a really lovely trip it was kind of spare the moment we did not plan it out very long and i'll talk more about it in my next video uh, this one let's get right into it and so i guess i'll just start with this big old bag that i ha that i have and before i do show you anything i want you to know that i was in the parks for three days i went one day to hollywood studios which is where this bag is particularly from one day to animal kingdom where i kind of just didn't want to buy anything so i didn't and then one day at epcot but Epcot was the only day that my husband John went with me into the parks. The other two days were solo days because John actually had to work from work from home, work from the resort, which was the dolphin of swan and dolphin fame right off the boardwalk area by Epcot. So I did not go to Magic Kingdom and then we kind of went into Universal Studios a couple mornings and a couple evenings because we have the annual pass and you get some really good perks with that. Like after 4 p.m. you can get onto every ride once as like their express pass, their fast, their version of fast pass. And you can also get in early morning to the parks. So even though he had to work a couple days from the hotel, he also went into some of the parks with me. Okay, that kind of explains the basic setup of the trip. Let's look at some of the awesome stuff I got from Hollywood Studios. The first thing I, we did also go to Disney Springs and when I saw this in Disney Springs, I said, no, I'm gonna be good. And then I saw it again in Hollywood Studios and went, nah, I'm not gonna be good, I don't care. This was the only plush I bought on the trip. I'm trying to be very picky with my plushes, but if you know me, you know I have just the biggest soft spot in my heart for, for porgs and a big foot porg plush i mean that was a must get that was a must need for sure i think my next big foot i really want to get the figment big foot but haven't done that yet um and then i'll probably like i said i'm trying to cool down on the plushes a little bit but we decided to add like a little plush display area downstairs so he's probably going to be like one of the features of that just a little close up of him like look at those little feet oh my gosh i love the colors on him and when i saw him i was like he just needs he needs a hug so he had to come home with me the store i went in i didn't go to galaxy's edge um i did go on the smugglers run ride i'm not a fan this was my second attempt at it and i just don't like it but i did want to go shopping in galaxy's edge and then i just didn't like I was like I'll go back and then I did not go back so luckily there was a store on like the main strip of Hollywood Studios that had a bunch of like Mandalorian and just general Star Wars merch and so that's where I picked up the Porg and I also picked up two really cute pairs of socks I got myself a baby Yoda pair of socks that says protect attack snack and nap I thought they were pretty cute and I love socks of this length very adorable and then i picked up for my husband this pair of baby yoda socks as well i thought the colors were awesome i also picked up for him because i felt bad that this was one of the days he couldn't come to the park with me so i picked him up a couple gifts i picked up this mandalorian beanie for him it has again the child on the front this is like my husband's perfect color like this exact shade of green so when i saw it i was like yes have to do it he was ve have to get this for him he was very excited about it and he's been wearing it pretty much non-stop and he looks pretty adorable if i may say so myself my next purchase i debated and i finally was like you know what yeah i'm gonna go for it this is my first non-holiday spirit jersey i'm not much for spirit jerseys but i just loved the look of this one so so much <sighs> so 
seems to work. <laughs> you can tell. I also am not really one to wear white or cream or off-white, but, because you know, it'll get dirty and I have a black cat at home and so there's that, but again, I just looked at this face and I could not say no. And on the back, the spirit jersey part, it says the bounty, which I rather liked and I really enjoyed the colors on this one. So I think wearing this with like black leggings would look pretty great, honestly. The next two items were things I actually picked up in our hotel gift shop. The first really isn't like Disney-ish or anything like that, but I wanted to show you guys anyway. We actually spent our very first day and first night at the old Key West Resort because it's somewhere that we've always wanted to try and I'll talk about that a little bit more probably in my next video but my overall quick quick thoughts in case you want to know or in case you've stayed there and you want to compare notes um we really liked it but would I spend the money to stay there again no especially because right now the boat to Disney Springs isn't running and I didn't realize that I probably should have known that but I, again it was pretty spur of the moment so we just booked it and we were like this is great when we go to Disney Springs take the boat over not running um but it has an awesome pool. It actually has a really good kid vibe because um, the pool has like this enormous sand castle, which is really neat. That's the slide. And uh, yet it's still really good for grownups too because I don't know, it, it, it's just like this really chill boardwalky vibe. And they have a really nice restaurant and a really just nice overall relaxing feel. So it's like a good place for families, but also a good place if you don't have uh, children. And this again, it's not very really Disney-ish, but I needed a pair of flip-flops because I totally just spaced on packing mine. And I, I was looking at a couple different pairs and my husband was like, oh, the glitter ones. And I was like, they were one of my top pairs. We have a very similar taste. He'll tell you his better taste. He probably does. And so I got these um, Javianas. I just put, I asked them at the, the, the gift shop to take them um, like off for me and like cut the, the tags and whatnot. And they really were nice about doing that. But I just thought it'd be easy to show them on the display hook. So these were a little bit more expensive than I would really want to spend on flip flops, maybe about 30 ish, a little bit more uh, bucks. But that's probably what I get for staying at a deluxe resort <laughs> um, and this being like the only option in their gift shop, just different like patterns of these. But I was really happy with these and I will keep them for a long time. Then we moved over to the Dolphin where we stayed for gosh five nights I think. We have, we've stayed at the Swan before, we love it, and the Dolphin kind of blew it out of the water so I think that we'll be staying there many 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 times in the future. And again I'll talk more about that in my next video. But I saw this at lots of places. It happened to also be in our gift shop. It is this awesome puzzle. Quarantine, it got me. It got me into puzzles. I used to do them a lot with my dad when I was growing up and then none for like my whole adult life pretty much. And then quarantine hit and now I do puzzles. Don't want to tell you. Um, <laughs> so this is actually a thousand pieces and it might be obvious, but she'll, I don't want to make assumptions. So the shape of the puzzle is the Mickey head. It is not this rectangular, or I'm sorry, square. Yeah, that looks like a square, like square teal. You don't have a nice square border. It is the Mickey head. The pieces are super tiny. It is not a very durable puzzle, like, and it wouldn't stick together very well. Like if you have pets who like to help you with puzzles, keep this one as far away from them as possible. Like the pieces, even when you put them down, they don't really, uh, click they don't really connect very well it's very easy to take apart that's a pro um <laughs> but the con is that this is definitely the hardest puzzle i've done to date um a thousand pieces already is definitely a challenge but i am one of those people probably most of you out there who do puzzles like to start with the edge this shape made it actually impossible to start with the edge I, I, it was what I finished the puzzle with. I started with, I actually started with the bottom. I wanted to do the Tower of Terror and kind of worked my way up um, and just looked for the different icons. But this was super fun. I really enjoyed this one and I'll definitely do it again. I just know that I cannot start with the edges. The way it's designed, they don't all even link up. <laughs> like it's very strange, but very, very fun. Here's a quick close up of it. I love, love, love the art style especially the castle and this does turn out to be really really big so if you get it just make sure to plan for enough space. I picked up three mugs while we were there, two in Disney Springs and one in 
Hollywood Studios. And I say that only to say that this, these are from the ABC, there's a quick flash for you, the ABC collection. And so where, you know, they take well, I'll show you in a second, but they each have, they've won for each of the letters of the alphabet. Disneyland even has different versions of these. And I already have three and I bought a mug tree for my kitchen that swivels and you can fit six mugs on it. So I knew just to keep a consistent look, I wanted to get three more. And so these are the three that I actually had my eye most on. Oh, but I mentioned that I got them at two different stores because even though they do technically have A through Z, not every store is gonna carry it. So you're gonna have to do some hunting for the one that you wanted. So at Disney Springs, I picked up these two. The one that I really, really had my heart set on was the W for the World Showcase. I am such a sucker for the World Showcase. My favorite countries, I actually don't base on eating or drinking or shows or anything like that. I base completely on the beauty of them and the architecture. So for me, it's Italy and France all the way. Love, love, love them. I have some close, you know, runners up to that. Um, but just in case you're wondering my favorite pavilions, it's Italy and then France and then probably Japan. And we'll talk about Japan a little bit later. But they did a really wonderful job representing like the icons on this mug. And I would actually say the America at the bottom, pretty darn impressive. I think the balance of this mug with the, the different icons around the W, really nice. The other one I picked up was like my number six, I think. Like I really, really like it, but I don't love it to the degree I love all my other ABC mugs. It is the V for villains. So I like villains, but I'm not like super obsessed with villains. I, I'm not like a villain person or princess person. I like both. I'm much more of like a sidekick person. Again, see, porgs, right? Uh, I like the characters that are in the movies for like 5% of the movie. <laughs> uh, which uh, speaking of, how long sidekicks are in movies. Like I feel like Pua and Moana, he did not get enough time to shine. But then I just watched Raya and the Last Dragon, which is like absolutely my new favorite Disney movie. And was it, is it Tuk Tuk? Just wanna make sure I get that right because it's the first time I've said that name out loud. But Tuk Tuk, her sidekick, is in the movie for so much of it. So I was really all about that. But anyway, my favorite female villain is on here, and that's Maleficent, particularly in her dragon form. So love that. The other villains, I'm like not that jazzed about. Like I just prefer other villains. You have Hades. I like Hades. Um, Cruella, I really could not care less about Cruella. The Evil Queen, I think she is a look, but I don't really care about that movie. And also the Evil Queen as the old hag, which I will give you is really awesome. I do like that a lot. My favorite male villain and my favorite villain overall, Gaston, gets so little representation. I would love to see him on this. But the reason I still overall got this one, even though it wasn't my absolute favorite lineup of villains, Sorcerer Mickey. I love Sorcerer Mickey. So had to get the mug that he was on. And finally, this one is probably one of the least like exciting ABC mugs, but there's something about it that as soon as I look at it, I'm transported right to Disney World. And you're gonna be like, Kate, you didn't even go to this park. How big of a fan are you? And it's true. Magic Kingdom is not my favorite park, but it is the most magical. I'll give you that, absolutely. And I am definitely, you know, surrounded by the magic and wonder when I'm on Main Street. I love Main Street USA, the, like the whole quaint vibe of it. And maybe it's because I'm from a city and that city is very dirty and not very quaint <laughs> at all that like I'm romanticizing this kind of like small town life but I love it, so I'll romanticize it all I want. And it has the trolley, and it has some of the buildings that I love, the, sc the gold scroll in the end, gorgeous. Um, and then they have someone selling the Mickey balloons, and I'm all about that, so it's a little bit of whimsy in this otherwise beautiful design. And so my initials right now are KL, and I didn't love the options they had ABC-wise for K and L. They had Kilimanjaro Safaris, which I love, but it doesn't look very Disney-ish to me because it's just a bunch of animals, which again, they look adorable, but doesn't like scream Disney to me, which is what I was looking for. And the L, I've seen the Disneyland version and the Disney World versions. And so I think the Disney World version is Lion King and just not one of my favorites. And I, it's funny because I kind of think Kilimanjaro Safaris and Lion King, they would have gone really well together if you had liked those two things a lot. 
not my faves. The L for Disneyland is Lightning McQueen, which I love the Radiator Springs Racer ride, but I don't know if I'd want a mug every day with Lightning McQueen on it. And the K, I believe, is the King Arthur Carousel. I know too much about this collection is what I'm saying. Anyway, <laughs> my maiden name, however, did start with an M. So maybe I can kind of be like, that's my nod to me. <laughs> also, I don't really care if it matches, but very fun. All right, I'm gonna go for some Disney souvenirs that are a little bit different than the, than the normal. The first is gonna be something free that we grabbed in Disney Springs at one of my favorite, if not my all time, like new record favorite place. It was Wine Bar George. We definitely love Wine Bar George. If you are a, like a wino like me, go there. <laughs> you will enjoy yourself and the food is very good. But we also made it back for the first time in years to Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. Oh my God. The sangria, trust me, get it. If you like sangria and rum, get it. And uh, also the chicken wings. You will thank me if you order the pepper chicken wings. Like I, they didn't sound that great. They didn't sound like much. Oh, we went back again to get the sangria and the chicken wings. I'll have another story about Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar and Wine Bar George coming up shortly. But for right now, it's a really cool bar. And uh, they have these coasters, I couldn't think of the word coasters for a second. They have these really cool coasters as if uh, Jock Lindsay had accumulated them from many trips around the world. Now on the one side, it does say Jock Lindsay's hangar bar established 1955. It's a whole story um, in Disney Springs. And then we just grabbed a couple. And so this one is from the Cafe Noir in Belgium. That one's very pretty. But then my favorite, so I made sure we grabbed a couple of these. And again, I grabbed these from two different trips, is the absolute gorgeous look of the Python bar from Venezuela. And hoping to go again to Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar in July and I'll be getting even more because we went in 2016 and we kept these on our home bar. We, we got a big stack because John like way over tipped the bartender. That's like his, it's kind of his everyday go-to when he goes to a bar, <laughs> but it's also something he really likes to do for some reason at Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar. He likes to really over, over, over tip. And uh, he's like, well, it's a tradition. Now I have to keep doing it. And I'm like, you do you, whatever you want to do. I don't care. And so um, the bartender gave us so many to take home that we just used them constantly. And we were there in 2016 and we just recently run out of coasters. So, and we reused them. It's not like we had a hundred. But I made sure to get a small stack from our two visits and really thought that was fun. And if you have not made it to Jock Lindsay's Hangar Bar, you are really missing out. Next up, again, we were there during the Flower and Garden Festival, which is still going on. It's really like it, it's running really long this year. And then we also were there the week leading up to Easter. We were there several days before Easter. And so we not only did the Spikes Pollination Exploration Hunt, which you can do during Flower and Garden, but we also did the Easter Extravaganza Hunt, where you can find these huge Easter eggs throughout the Epcot pavilions. And in the uh, Flower and Garden one, you you go to these different gardens around Epcot, mostly in the World Showcase, but there's some in the other parts as well. And you look for this bee named Spike and you have to match up the sticker that you get with where you found it. And so technically, I mean, you pay $8 for each one. We each did um, an egg hunt and I'll explain why. And, but we then shared the one flower, flower garden, I should say, the Spike's Spikes hunt, I'll say. And the reason why we did two of the eggs is because you get a prize and you get a prize whether you complete it or not. And right now they're giving you the prize as soon as you buy it. Um, Cause I guess they don't want you coming back. <laughs> and so the prize for the Easter egg hunt was you got to pick two little Easter eggs and they were all out 
Again, it was right before Easter. It was, only, it was still a few days before Easter, so I'm assuming people were still going to be doing this hunt. But I wanted a matching set. And Chip and Dale, they're really cute. At first, they tried to tell me that they only had Dale. And I was like, oh, no, really? And they even brought up this entire, like, huge plastic bag of all these Dale eggs. Like, you could only... Dale has this purple and white um, costume on for Easter. And so they pull up this huge thing. All I'm seeing is, like, a sea of brown, purple, and white. Brown, purple, and white. And then I was like... I think I see a Dale and I counted really quickly and I could see like 10 to it days or chips. I think I see a chip and like there were a lot of chips in that bag and they were trying to tell me they didn't have them. I didn't make like a big fuss. I kind of was just like, oh no, really? And they showed me right away and I was like, oh, I think I see one. And they were like, oh, you do. And they, they gave us one. But anyway, in order to get two eggs, we had to buy two maps and I wanted a matching set. But I was really surprised they didn't have all the options available. So I won't give you like a big close up of the egg. Um, I, okay, we officially didn't complete it. There's one we left off because we literally could not find it. And so we just kept saying, um, you know, whatever's last will be it. But I won't give you a big close up because I know some people, uh, actually the egg one, I guess I can because this definitely isn't still happening. But the flower one, I will not give you a big old close up in case you don't want to see. But I do have a few that are, that are left unstickered because John wasn't feeling too well. He ate something that didn't agree with him. And so we had to leave Epcot. So we never got to finish this one, but I have a friend, Katie from Over the Mooney, who is going soon to do this. And so I told her I would steal the rest of her stickers. Um, this one, I, it didn't really send me. And the prizes I was not as into, but I still thought it was a fun activity. The Easter egg hunt one, I really enjoyed doing. As you automatically got two prizes. You got a set of two collector's plates. And from what I read prior, and th I mean, they're just, they're just plastic. They're actually not even <laughs> very nice. And I'm not 100% sure I'm going to like really keep them. Like I, I'm not going to throw them out. I would give them to someone, but maybe who liked it more than me. But I, I saw online that there were four options and I was like, oh, there's a figment one. Definitely want to get that one. And I forget the other cat. Oh, orange bird, I think was one of the other options. And I was like, definitely want to get figment and orange bird. Well, they were like, all we got left is spike. So you get spike. And I was like, okay. So I'm just even seeing them really up close for the first time now. Cause I just put them right in my backpack. <laughs> when I first got them, I was like, oh, a little disappointed. I mean, it's cool. Cause spike is the mascot of the festival, but I don't know. I really would have preferred figment and uh, orange bird. They're, they're fine. They're fine. For $8, they're fine, I guess. <laughs> I just thought that the Easter eggs were much cuter because they are a real, like, decor item that I will put out every Easter. And maybe even I'll go again next year and then I'll start building this little Easter egg pile and that'll be really cute. So we looked two or three times throughout the United Kingdom Pavilion and we could not figure out so uh, who went there. I figured it was probably thematically the White Rabbit, but... I didn't want to make any assumptions and sure enough it was and so I will have to put that on because <laughs> I do usually well we have one from a from like two Thanksgivings ago, I guess, where we did a Chippendale scavenger hunt for the holidays. And so we have, we put that one up as like little decor at our house for the holidays. So I'll probably keep this one for next like springtime as well. So I will complete it, but you can kind of see how, how cute this is. I really, really like this one, but yeah, we could not find where that white rabbit was for anything. And like I said, also we had to leave since my husband wasn't feeling too well. So we never got a chance to check again. I eventually looked it up online and he was like on top of a post, but I'm wondering if he fell over or something because I swear I checked every post. <laughs> I bought myself five pin boxes. Two of them were the 2021 mystery set. So I'll get four of those pins, which if they're all unique, I would get half the collection. Um, and I will be opening these up in my very next video because I can't wait. I could wait long enough to film it and no longer. But they have some really neat characters. I have like my eye on three of them, maybe four of them. So I'm hoping that two boxes is enough because I definitely did not want all the pins. And then something that I never thought I would get. There are these reveal conceal mystery pins and it's a limited release set. And so you get to see the first pin that you purchase. Um, and then the other half of the pins are hidden. So you know which one you get, but you don't know about the one inside. And this is from the Disney switchboard set because all the characters are calling someone mostly on phones. But as you can see, Buzz is using his wrist communicator. I 
did get some other pins. And so of course, because we stayed one night in Old Key West Resort, I had to get the Old Key West pin and it shows Mickey just totally relaxing. And it's such a vibe and I'm so here for it. Love that pin. I also picked up a limited edition pin. I don't think this set has been selling very well because I've been seeing months and months and months of backed up pins. So I'm uh, on Shop Disney. But so I only got this set. I don't have I don't have any interest in collecting the, this whole set, the All Stars set. But I had to get my boy Scrooge McDuck, who is an All Star, of course, in swimming, specifically swimming in coins. But he's a duck, so I guess he's probably pretty good at swimming in water as well. So that was awesome. And then another set. I'm gonna even take it out of its plastic right now is a limited edition of the all-stars was also limited edition but a limited edition that features chippendale as the rescue rangers and i'm newly into chippendale and collecting them in pin form so i had to get this and it's the magical comic series i haven't opened even opened it up yet but um oh it's pretty cute on the inside I, I do think it's gonna be hard for you to see but i'll still try to show you anyway but i'll probably just be displaying it with the um pin shot anyhow so that's fine by me So I picked up these really cool Toy Story pens. They're Slinky Dog and my favorite, the Alien. And I love writing with these. It just makes me so happy. I actually bought three. I bought two Slinkies because my cat actually really likes gnawing on his ears. He doesn't bite them off or anything like that, but he loves to just try to try to catch his ears if I'm like, if I can use it as a cat toy is what I'm saying. And uh, so no, these are really fun, the silhouettes. I've bought these as gifts for people as well before, but I bought two Slinkies and one's already at work. So that's why you're seeing two. I didn't think you guys really needed to see two of the same one, but they are absolutely adorable. Even though the alien is my favorite character, there's something about the Slinky dog that I find just so adorable and charming that I had to get him twice. Okay, so I told you that I would have another Disney Springs Wine Bar George and Jock Lindsay's Hanger Bar story, and here it is. So, we went to Wine Bar George and had like, so I had some great champagne. Champagne is like my, my number one drink of choice. So enjoyed that. And we had some food. And then we went over to Jock Lindsay's Hanger Bar and I had some sangria and uh, John had some drinks as well that I also tasted. And uh, we, we did again eat. We had those chicken wings that were so good and we left feeling great. I'll tell you that much. We were walking around Disney Springs just so happy, enjoying ourselves. And we went into the Wonderground Gallery because we both love looking at the art prints. And I always get postcards, so I have some postcards to show you. Well, I guess I didn't realize um, how much we had had to drink until we started walking around. And uh, let's just say there are a couple moments I don't really remember all that clearly. Now, don't get me wrong, we weren't we weren't so bad. We made it back to our hotel on the bus just fine. But I do remember seeing this really awesome Mulan print and saying, oh, because Mulan is my husband's one of his favorite movies and he loves Mushu, I was like, we have to get this one. And then this one, which I'm gonna show you in a few minutes because it's part of my souvenir section. I knew I got that one for sure. Remembered that clear as a bell. But then I came home and I started going through my Disney World bags and I was like, I don't remember this one even a little bit. <laughs> it's very cute and I'm sure that uh, I'll be able to display it somewhere. But it's um, Mickey Mouse as a chef making <laughs> spaghetti meatballs with like kind of a little hidden Mickey meatball pile on top of the pasta, so. Like, I don't know, like, this is just something that never would have occurred to me to actually purchase. Maybe I, I probably was like, this will look great in the kitchen. That's probably where my brain went, but I don't remember that. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. Um, and again, I will show you the other one in just a minute, but there's someone watching here who probably, um, who I don't want to spoil her, her little souvenirs for. So I'll hold off on that one for a few minutes. We are just at the end of our Disney World part of this video, um, and I have this super cool bag. You can see it says House of Blues on it. This is like the neatest, um, get, like, 
purchase bag I've ever gotten. And it wasn't even like, hey, pay extra for this reusable bag. You just got a super nice high quality shopping bag. So we went on our very last day, went back to Disney Springs to have their like gospel brunch. And it was honestly, like if you're there on a Saturday or Sunday and you're looking for brunch, House of Blues, go, go, go. We've also done Chef Art Smith's and while I thought that was wonderful, Oh, House of Blues was so much better. It was so incredible. Now we do love that restaurant anyway. It's like a big vacation restaurant for us, but I mean, yes, you have to go. And they were running a deal in their gift shop on shirts and my husband found two that he really wanted to get for me. So I wasn't gonna stop him, you know what I mean? And <laughs> they really felt very House of Blues-ish, especially the first one, because it even says House of Blues right on the front. And I really liked the color of this. I really liked the neckline. It has like, almost like a choker look to it, but then like a little cutout and it's sleeveless, which I'm super into. I actually hate wearing sleeves, which is why you rarely see me in a t-shirt on this channel and why spirit jerseys are not really my big thing, but I love some sleeveless shirts. And what I really liked about this is that the House of Blues logo totally made me think about the VH1 like Rock of Love show a long, long, long time ago. I'm dating myself, but I really like this. I thought this would be super cute. And again, they were running a deal, so why not? And then we found this other shirt that's completely different from like any other kind of shirt that I have. And it is sleeveless, but it's very like drapey. So I think again, like a pair of like tight leggings under this would really make this look great. And it's a cassette, it says Orlando 97, and it says House of Blues with the cassette tape unwound. And if you are too young to understand cassette tape, then I don't know how to help you with this one. This is just for people my age and older. <laughs> Let's transition to some universal stuff. Now I will say I wore my Funko Pop, it's shawarma time marvel shirt on the trip because i thought it was the perfect thing to bridge like the world of disney and the universal park since they have marvel representation and i did get two shirts there as well one that i had had my eye on since our last trip to universal and it was this hot pink number can't be missed in this one and it just says universal studios florida i don't know sometimes you know you get something in your mind you can't stop thinking about it well i haven't been able to stop thinking about this shirt since our last universal trip so bought it and then this one was a spur of the moment purchase but it matches something my husband bought years ago at Universal Studios in Simpsons land I bought this Duff crop top I thought it'd be absolutely perfect for workouts especially and it's just a great little nod to the Simpsons I picked up this chocolate frog mask like in the Harry Potter universe, chocolate frogs are absolutely one of my favorite things. Again, I like things that get very little representation. Um, <laughs> and so they have this in like a medium and a large. And I just picked the medium because I figured I have a medium sized face and it worked out perfectly. I'll show you a little bit of it right there. I love it. I think the color is so pretty and it says watch out for jumping frogs. I'm all about that message. I love it. And I'll probably start wearing this one to work now that I've shown it to you guys. Okay, so at this point we have hit the end of the things that I purchased for myself. Universal, again, just doesn't have that much I wanna ever buy. And we didn't spend that much time in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. So probably next trip I'll get some things. I might, might get a couple Harry Potter pins. I'm very hesitant to start a brand new pin collection, but you never know. And so there are some other cool things, but I'll probably hold off, like I said, to a future trip. Now, I do still have other things to share with you guys, and that's a small souvenir section. So my friends, Jess and Chris, if you happen to be watching or listening to this, now's your time to exit. Told you I'd give you a warning. And uh, we did get a few snacks for my mother-in-law and father-in-law who watched our cats while we were gone. So major thanks to them but we brought, brought them home just like snacks like a popcorn sampler from goofy's candy co to um oh god what are they called caramel apples which i have no desire to eat a caramel apple but they love them and they make them last forever it's insane to me how long it could take them to eat the caramel apples and fudge which is not something i've ever bought in disney before for some reason um i'm not again i'm not that i'm not right into fudge but my father-in-law loves it so we got them a couple of treats and so 
I don't I don't have any of those because we already let them eat those but definitely fun to bring back sweets for people now for my friends Jess and Chris we we started off with a mug because they have recently become like mug people and mug collectors and he especially is a big Jurassic Park Jurassic World fan I think he's more Jurassic Park but we just thought this was such a cool mug like the color scheme of the black and blue is so great and it also isn't like super in your face that it's like a fandom piece of merchandise which I think he'll like and on the one side it says Jurassic World Isla Nublar Lagoon and then it says something that I'll just let you read because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna attempt it it's the name of a probably maybe a real dinosaur maybe a fake dinosaur I don't even know <laughs> I can't say I'm not into dinosaurs but I know we're looking forward to their new coaster opening up this summer so kind of like a little preemptive souvenir even though it's not specifically themed to that coaster I showed you those socks earlier, uh, the two pairs of the child socks, and I got the same pair I got for my husband for Chris, and I got the same pair I got for myself for Jess, so we'll be sock twins, and isn't that just amazing? Um, before I forget about it, the third postcard that I got at Wonderground Gallery was for her. My friend Jess has a huge st stitch collection, and so I had to get her this stitch and scrump piece of art, and this was the only one I truly, truly remembered the entire trip that I had bought it. <laughs> So I also got her a stitch pin and I was, a little, she has a couple stitch pins, but not like a ton. So I'm really hoping she doesn't have this one, uh, but it is because I have this one and I, I just love it. It's stitched like on vacation and I was like, okay, a stitch lover needs this pin. You might remember all the way back, like towards the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we'd be talking about the Mitsukoshi store in the Japan Pavilion in Epcot. And they have a lot of really cool, unique items there that you can't find anywhere else on property. Case in point is this little Gudetama or the lazy egg, um, mystery egg, I would say. It's this little keychain, and inside there's supposed to be a mystery Gudetama. And but if my friend Chris just really loves this character again he's just a lazy egg that's all he is and you can find a lot of merch for him with like Hot Topic and stuff but it was really neat to get it from Mitsukoshi and last but not least I really do like bringing home snacks especially ones that scream Disney at people and what screams Disney more than popcorn but this confetti colored popcorn I think this is so neat oh and it actually is that's the flavor is confetti now we had brought this home for the same people before so I figured it was a pretty safe bet and I think I tasted the purple one and it did taste like grape so I'm assuming they kind of taste like what you assume they they taste like but I just I there are flavors of their pop Disney popcorn I really enjoy probably more than I'd even enjoy this uh, but I mean look at it like it's just so fun it's like a Disney trip in a package so hopefully fingers crossed they liked it the first time and by gosh they'll like it again I think we're finally done everybody this video turned out a lot longer than I thought it was going to but I guess the best haul videos always do so in my next video I'm definitely going to be opening up those five pin boxes I got on vacation because I really 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 <laughs> want to know what's in them finally I did mean to get some other pin boxes that I forgot about so we are planning on going and just doing Disney Springs and Universal again this summer and so maybe be in Disney Springs I can pick up a few more boxes. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you real soon.